Okay. 2006, Form B, free response, question three. It's a calculator problem. We're going to work this one out, and then I have the score guidelines right here on the board, and we'll do the scoring of the problem. So it starts with there's a figure above is a graph of function x, which models the height of a skateboard ramp. The function meets the following requirements. At x equals zero, the value of the function is zero. And the slope of the function is zero. All right, so I'm filling in some facts. At x equals four, the value of the function is one. And the slope of the graph of the function is one. So we're learning the derivatives and the functions. Between zero and four, the function is increasing. So f prime of x is greater than zero when x is between zero and four. Let f of x equal ax squared, where a is a non-zero constant for a. Show that it's, it is not possible to find a value a for a value for a, so that f meets requirement two above. All right. So we've got to prove that it's not possible to find an a such that requirement two is met. All right, well, if you have the function f of x equals ax squared, then theoretically, I'm going to start with f of 4 has to equal 1. If I plug that in, 1 equals a to the 4 squared, so a would have to be 1 16th. Okay, so that would mean f of x would equal 1 16th x squared. So if you do that, you take the derivative of this, f prime of x, I would get 1 8th x. And f prime of 4 would equal 1 half. Thus, f prime of 4 would not equal 1. So f would not satisfy two, would not meet little two. I would call that a. We'll see if I have that right. It's pretty straightforward. You just had two facts and you use your knowledge of what we have. So we group that. We'll put that, that's letter A in the red. All right, letter B. Let g of x equal cx cubed minus x squared over 16, where c is a non-zero constant. Find the value of c so that g meets requirement 2 above. Show the work that leads to your answer. So again, we're going to use requirement 2. So again, I'm just going to plug in. We'll start with that g of one would equal four would equal one. So one equals c. 4 cubed minus 4 squared over 16. If I solve this, and I can go through some lots, but I, this is 1, bring it over, it makes 2 by So I get C is 1 32nd. All right, we can go through. That's just algebra. Well, so again, here we go. So that means that G of X would equal 1 32nd X cubed minus, and I would write as 1 16th x squared, making g prime of x 3 30 seconds x squared minus 1 8th x. And if we plug in 4, I get 3 30 seconds times 4 squared minus 1 8th of 4. If I do this math, 16, that's 1 half, I get b prime of 4 is 3 halves minus 1 half, b prime of 4 equals 1. So, the value of c, it checks off, I just double checked it, c is 1 32nd, that's all it asks for here is show the work that leads and this is my double check. It's probably a point for the double check, 
but you made sure it worked. So we'll group that. That's letter B in blue. So we'll have to take a look here again. You see in green. Using the function G and your value of C from part B, show that G does not meet the requirement three. Okay. So we got G of X, and we agreed it was our function here from the last problem was G of X equal. Let's see, I got a book a little tighter. One thirty second X cubed minus one sixteenth X squared. And we had G prime of X at three thirty seconds X squared minus one eighth X. And the last one says the function is always increasing. Well, again, this is a calculator problem, so I might be tempted to a couple ways to do this. I see there's an x common, so I would factor, I think, g prime of x. Write that as x times 330 seconds, x minus an 8. And I can solve this. So obviously, there, g prime of x would equal 0 at x equals 0. And 1 eighth divided by 330 seconds. So when I do 1 eighth divided by 330 seconds, I get uh, 4 thirds. And x equals 4 thirds. So those are my zeros. Well, that's giving me a sign right away that it's probably not always positive. I've just got to show that it's negative. So if I try 1, g prime of 1, it's less than 0. When you plug it in, you get a negative value. So thus, not increasing that. And that means it's negative the whole way. Not increasing in, on zero to four thirds. So it fails so fails requirement two or three. Failing requirement. And I'm going to abbreviate three. Alright, there's letter C. I'll group that. That in green. All right, that leaves letter D, which I'll do in black. Let h of x equal x to the n over k, where k is a non-zero constant and n is a positive integer. Find the values of k and n so that h meets requirement two above. Show that h also meets one and three. Makes me think that this is the most points on the test because it has the most work. So again, we're going to start with requirement two. So h of four has to equal one. So 1 equals x to the n over k, which we don't know anything. But we also know h prime of 4 equals 1. And we know the derivative of this is n times x to the n minus 1 over k. Oh, what am I doing? We also know, when I go back here, this is 4 to the n over k. There's two unknowns. This would be h prime of x. So when I plug in the 4, I get n times 4 to the n minus 1 over k. And that would equal 1. All right. I have to solve two equations, two unknowns. I've got to get n and k from these things. This is going to take a little bit of work. What I know is from exponent rules is I can rewrite this equation, the black one on the right side, to n. 4n, 4 to the negative 1 over k equals 1. And I know 4 to the n over k is 1. So I know this right there is 1. So I will use that knowledge and write this. n times 4 to the negative 1 times 1 equals 1. So n over 4 equals 1. So n has to be the power of 4. Once I find that, I'm going to go back and plug it into the equation. Four to, 1 equals 4 to the 4 over k. So k has to be 4 to the 4th 
and that equals 256. So I did all this work, and now I have a function. And I'm not sure if I'm right. Um, seems a little strange, but at least it's round. And we'll be able to check it because we have to show. So it's x to the fourth over 256. Well, now I have to show that this means requirement 1 and 3. Well, requirement 1 is at 0. So let's see if, f of, if h of 0 is 0 and if h prime of 0 is 0. That's what we got to check. So I plug in h of 0, I get 0 over 256 to the 4 equals 0. Yes. And then the next one I would do is h prime of 0 is going to be 4 0 cubed over 256. That equals 0. So yes. Meets requirement 1. The next thing we want to check to make it sure it meets requirement 3. Requirement 3 is that it's strictly increasing. We know h prime of x equals 4x cubed over 256, which reduces to 4 over 256. Well, it doesn't matter. I know that h prime of x is greater than 0 because it's a cubic. It's all positive. 4, 0 to 4. Thus, meets 3. I'd be surprised if I earned all nine points. I would think I might have missed some language that I'll need. We'll score here. All right. So on the first one, there's two points. You got to show that a is one sixteenth or one eighth. I showed it the method of one eighth. I suppose if you showed the derivative, you get one. If I showed one sixteenth. I suppose if you did the derivative, you would show one eighth. And then I show A doesn't work by taking the derivative here. So again, I show it doesn't work right here. So I get two points for letter A. All right, I bring up letter B here. And there's a value of C. That's all you get the point for right here, 132nd. And the show. It doesn't even say that you had to show it, but it does show it. And often, i got to believe that it would take, they would award a point for this showing of things that they do right here. But this time, it's just one point for the 132nd value. All right, if I pull up letter C, there is a point for showing G prime of X, which I show right here. And then there is a point for the explanation, which they say g prime of x is less than 0 between the other, so it doesn't satisfy 3. And I show g prime is less than 1, thus not included, so I would say this gets me that point, so I get those two points. And right now, you think about it, we've done five, at least four points for letter D. Okay, last one. First thing is you get a point for 4 to the n over k equals 1, which I had right here. And you got a point for the derivative, which I had right here. So those two points. But you figure out k and n, where n is 4 and k is 256. So I get those points right here. And you had to have both of them to get the one point. You didn't get half, so you just get one. And finally, the verifications, which they show here in just one step. They, throw, they just show h of 0 is 0. And h prime is 0 and is increasing, which I did in this very long step and they did in a very short step. So again, a pretty complicated AP problem. So we would want to make sure that we would practice this and understand the concepts.